Insights on the March 19th, 2024 equinox. Welcome back, everyone. I am coming on during a nature walk to talk to you about the oncoming spring equinox here in the northern hemisphere. Uh, fall equinox, obviously, if you are in the southern hemisphere. Uh, here where I'm at, it is spring. It's lovely to be getting outdoors, and I am... Uh, just out having a nature walk, you might hear some um, sounds of nature, or I believe there's an airplane flying overhead, so here we are. Let's talk about the build-up to this time. These messages will be relevant uh, any time from the posting of this video um, up through the equinox on March 19th, and probably uh, lasting through uh, April. I also feel that the insights coming in right now will resonate for the conclusion of the 2023 year cycle. So we'll wrap up a little bit on the 2023 rabbit year cycle and uh, project forward a little bit into uh, the true new year, which of course is coming during the spring equinox, uh, during the transition from Pisces to Aries. 2024 true year ahead energies, let's talk about it. So there's a selection happening during this time. A lot of us have a life process that has concluded and we have two or three pathways that we get to choose from this point forward. It's hard to just blindly put one foot in front of the next with this energy, as we have to be more conclusive and direct about the way in which we are coalescing energy now. Um, it's not the best energy to just randomize or to just... Uh, detach from any type of more centralized understanding of what your next process is. Uh, therefore, we have to be very judicious during this time, and we have to be very uh, selective, actually, with what we're taking on. Um, at the same time, I feel that there is a safety net for a lot of people coming during this equinox, where even if you select the path that isn't quite perfect, or even if you uh, step forward, it's not going to be that bad if it's not perfect. Um, at the same time, we need to really test ourselves with, com with the comprehension of our greater um, forward momentum now. What I mean is um, we can't just act blindly now. We can't just um, totally trust that uh, things are coalescing without our um, grander input. We have to input in a way that speaks for the future. Um, as I was talking about in some of the March 2024 benevolence messages on Patreon, there's been this energy coming up in Pisces season that has been really yearning for a new life for a lot of people. Uh, I've been having people coming to me talking about how I just want a new life. I want things that I haven't had before. I feel so stagnated. I feel like um, I need some type of refreshment or I need to experience something that I've never experienced before. And being that we have Saturn in Pisces, we have Neptune in Pisces, we've had seven planets go through Pisces in March, it doesn't feel to me like that's quite here. It doesn't feel to me that this new life, this new territory, this new terrain has totally come to fruition. It feels like a rushed energy and it feels like um, things still need to gestate and things still need to resolve. So a lot of the choices that we're making now, a lot of the paths that we're embarking in some way need to honor the ending phase more than they do um, the depletion or the disregarding of the previous chapter. Um, and it'll, it will be curious to see over the next few years how a lot of the people, uh, which is a lot of people right now, who are wanting to totally disregard or totally disconnect, totally step away from the previous momentums they've been on, to see how that ends up affecting their life in the grander scheme of time uh, will be interesting to see. I think that it's not possible to really prescribe an outcome for that, but I do feel hesitant about these really grandiose feelings of, I'm done with everything I've done before, I'm setting aside my entire past, I'm breaking with history, I'm breaking with heritage, I'm like stepping out in this kind of like innovative pioneering state. This is very Aries mentality, which of course the equinox transitions us from Pisces to Aries. So it's natural to have these cravings to really step out, especially having Chiron there in Aries. We're going to be having a total solar eclipse in Aries. Do hit the subscribe button below if you uh, want to be notified when I put my total solar eclipse and lunar eclipse videos uh, later this month and in April. 
Um, so there's this pull, there's this gravitation coming from that eclipse energy that's telling us, please step out onto the new limb, make that new life for yourself. But it's the energy of the eclipse and it has Chiron there. So it's kind of like perhaps coded or detailed with the energy of escapism or with the energy of my level of pain or my level of need to get away from something that's so, you know, averse to what I see for myself is more fueling this need for a new life than an actual pure internal growth. Um, so that's what we need to move more towards during this equi uh, equinox time is the more pure form internal seed or the pure form internal soul energy that just naturally fertilizes and grows uh, energy in our life. It feels hard to me to create powerfully regenerative and healing stories when we're totally encased in the energy of escapism or in the need to run away. There are things that we have to get away from in our lives and there are things that, you know, we realize enough is enough and I've got to turn and walk the other direction. I've got to hightail it out of there. And if you're in that space where that is truly the designated and appropriate action, that's one thing. But it also doesn't just establish this quote-unquote new life energy that so many people are after even when you're there. So when you're there, there's a transition process and it's almost like a feeling of exile, isn't it? When you get into these places in your life that you have to get away from, uh, that's still not fun. It's not like what, while it can be healing over time and it's relieving, um, we need to really distinguish between the feeling of relief versus the concept of healing during this time. Because I think a lot of people with this Pisces energy might be having a little bit of an energy knot along the lines of relief and healing. Okay, I'm going to say something kind of groundbreaking here, but um, healing requires relief, but relief doesn't always require healing. That's a very, very important thing to understand here. Sometimes through addiction or sometimes through negative coping mechanisms, we experience relief, but we don't experience healing. However, whenever we're healing, we always experience relief, even if it is at the cost of some kind of false relief. So it does make me feel that there are perhaps some things in our experience that have to get more difficult uh, in order to actually have the future healing and relief that we need. Uh, for example, uh, stopping certain addictions uh, gives a feeling of difficulty, but it provides a future healing. Um, working out muscle groups that you have not worked out in a long time causes a sense of difficulty, but it gives a future sense of capacity and healing. In some way, it's going to be very important for us to somehow provide for ourselves both lines of investment into the future healing through a current difficulty, while also providing ourselves relief that lines up with true healing as well. So relief that moves us towards healing while also not being afraid to start to engage certain things that are perhaps difficult now for a superior future result. Now, the difficulty in this is that some of us struggle to like really set the balanced locus of how to honor both of these ends. So it's not saying that you need to really uh, dispossess yourself now or that you really need to step into martyrdom, though some people are also connecting to that with all of this Pisces energy. Um, but I do feel that there are some of us who really do have to get certain things off our table right now. We have to no longer have certain payments, no longer have certain obligations, um, and they need to be replaced with a more undeniably healthy cyclic obligation that gives us more in the future instead of just continues to harvest, harvest, and harvest uh, the energy that we actually need now. Okay, and on the subject of material changes, uh, material expansion or contraction, uh, adding property or 
holdings to your portfolio, reducing them, increasing, contracting your material standpoint. This is coming up for a lot of people during this time as well. Starting to understand that you and your soul energy is not dependent on these things is an important component of making the right decision here. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people too attached, too emotionally invested in the material constructs. Um, and certainly they do have a lot of effect on people's um, immediate feelings and well-being. Um, but past a certain point, we have to stop being so reliant on them. And we need to be more reliant on aligning our energy properly. So there are very, very savvy choices that can be made during this time. We're in all planets direct. We're right on an eclipse point. There are very savvy life-changing material decisions that can be made here. Um, and it is overall a positive time uh, for shift or change on the material standpoint. If, I'm going to put a major if onto this, if we have a generalized, aligned understanding of our momentum, what we're moving towards, and these material choices align that in a way that makes sense and don't create more hazard or more imposition or more obstacles on that path, uh, this is a wonderful time for solid investments and for um, any type of also investment in your education, into your spiritual practices, investments into spaces as well that enable that or make that more um, efficient. This is wonderful. Also investments in safety, investments in um, infrastructure are all really good here. Although I feel that there are a lot of all or nothing mindsets, so it's like I've been saving for years and it's going to take everything I have to do this, um, it's actually not that bad. It's not that bad during this time. And I feel that um, there is a lot of immediate gain for people as they materially expand, but it has a contingency attached to it, which is that of shaping up longer term plans that sort of prove or justify these types of expansions. Basically, we cannot be having like whimsical, impulsive material changes and just like um, kind of being all over the place with how we expand or contract. So um, I also feel that during this time, there are going to be a lot of visions and there are going to be a lot of like dream space operation happening. So it's like you have the dream of where you need to be or you immediately know when you step into the environment, like this is where I need to move to. Um, or you see more chance and expansion within these changes than in the current uh, situation that you have. It's very good here to be economical. It's very good to give yourself margin. And it's very good to invest in things that open up margin or open up possibility. And um, this equinox period, this uh, rest of the month of March especially, um, any further reductions that you need to do or anything that you need to get off your plate, because I will tell you guys, as we get past this equinox, as we get past this eclipse season, um, really by the time we're getting into May 2024, a lot of strength of character is required. There's going to be a lot of like stepping into unknown waters and a lot of trying new things, a lot of need for margin and energy and responsibility and commitment. So it's very important during this equinox to invest in a way or to work with your energy in a way that starts to open up your capacity to do that. So this is not a great time to take on commitments that you don't want to do, that you know that you don't want to do, or that you don't have the energy to do. Not a great time to take on unnecessary payments or debt. Um, any type of payments or debt, I'm seeing it's on people's mind right now. Saturn is in Pisces and it's like getting transited. So it's, there's a way that it can, leverage can be used really well, but it's like a, has to require a very balanced type of mindset. Just make sure that you're not signing yourself up for something that you don't feel that you could have be possible without very specific conditional aspects of life because I'm seeing that a lot of conditions are changing over this oncoming year. And I'm seeing some people need to rest or take a break from things as well. So it's good for a vacation here or good for a um, remission, reduction, or recharge, especially on the Pisces season side of the equinox. And um, yes, by the time we get to Aries and we get to the eclipse season, a lot of problems are solved. A lot of spaces are reintegrated and there is a lot of new hope and possibility and vitality coming through. And I, I really trust in that. Um, it's just very important to 
clear up and really off gas. You know, I've been talking in the March 2024 Signed by Signs, which are on Patreon. I'll link that below if you want to get all of the signs for March. Um, a lot of what was coming up was about like the overproduction of energy and how that creates uh, damaging byproducts uh, at an energetic and bodily level. Um, you know, in, in the same way that like energy production creates hazardous byproducts, you know, at, in like factories or energy plants, or uh, it's a similar thing when people get into this uh, overproductive or um, over energetic state, they start to have negative health problems, or they start to uh, be more angry, or they start to put off energy that is um, hazardous. Uh, so it's important to nip that in the bud here, and it's important to um, not be overworking yourself or overproducing, um, because we're about to get into a major test of quality as well. So I'll tell you guys that that's coming up very strongly during this equinox time. The quality factor is about to become very important, and it's not just about endless production or quantity. Um, so quality over quantity is um, very integral in the dragon year, and there's also going to be a large need for movement changes and travel, uh, covering distance. Um, so keep that in mind as you make uh, decisions during this time. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful time. Hit the subscribe button below, thumbs up this video, and check out the premium content over on Patreon. It's very helpful leading up to this eclipse as we've talked and talked about uh, many different spiritual concepts that are prevalent uh, leading up to that. Um, so thank you all so much. Uh, leave me a comment below about what you think about this time, and have a wonderful equinox. Bye.